Unlike my friend Jerome, poof, in the morning, poof, conscious body. And you would say, based on that, well, Tim is a body who is sometimes conscious and sometimes not. A body in which consciousness comes and goes. But I have to tell you, it's not like that for me. And I'm guessing it's not like that for you. What happens to me is that all you guys disappear completely. Tim disappears. The world disappears. And another world arises in awareness in which I may or may not appear to be Tim. And it may or may not have much to do with this. It feels just as real, just as... And I play out this whole thing in this world, and then that disappears. And then I'm in a place where I kind of exist and don't exist at the same time. Because I'm not conscious of anything. In the Christian Gnostic tradition, it's called the dazzling darkness. The Sufis call it the dark light. And it's a lovely image, because if you think of light with nothing to reflect on, if there was just light in the universe, it'd be dark. So if there's just awareness, conscious of nothing, it's unconscious. And we, I go there every night, and then somehow within that unconsciousness, boom, something happens, and boo, Tim's back. And generally, rather than going, bloody hell, what was that? I go, right, come on then, let's get on with it. <laughs> get the kids to school. Off we go. But it's actually profoundly strange. So what I see from that is that from the it perspective, inside the dream, I look like a body in which consciousness comes and goes. But from the I perspective, from what I am the whole time, I'm awareness and bodies come and go all the time, every day. Tim is not a permanent fixture here. But the I is, the awareness which is witnessing it is, because that's what I really am. Whereas this, gorgeous as it is, is just what I appear to be. Can you see that? Now, if you can see that, that you have these two natures right now, in this moment. The I and the it, the witness, awareness, and the body, what it's witnessing. Then you can see maybe number four, which is this. The world exists in you. The world exists in you. Have a look. So, no, the world doesn't exist in Tim. Tim exists in the world. Tiny, 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 tiny kind of speck in this thing. very particular, unique, as we all are. But when I come into this presence of consciousness, I see that what is it? It's like the dreamer at night. It's an emptiness within which the dream is arising. It's a, well to use a Buddhist term, a void. Or to use a better term as was suggested earlier, it's a, a plenum. It's the possibility to experience anything within which this particular experience right now is arising, it all in awareness. Now if I say to you, your thoughts exist in awareness, most people have no problem with that. You can feel that? Think a thought. Think kaleidoscope to yourself quietly. There is kaleidoscope. Duh. You're doing it? It's in awareness, right? But what about this? What is this? These colors. It's sensation, isn't it? And where, you know, it's touch and feel and sight and sound and colored patches and it's all. And where do they exist if not inside awareness? Look, my voice exists within awareness. If it didn't, you wouldn't be aware of it. 
The feeling of your bum on the seat exists in awareness. If it didn't, you wouldn't be aware of it. My hand waving exists within awareness. If it didn't, everything, everything exists within awareness, including your apparent identity as a particular person. There's this emptiness which you are, within which everything is. Isn't that interesting? Just like a dream. Turns out you're not a thing, you're a no-thing. There's a lovely line in the Gospel of Thomas, again, it seems to be hanging around for me, where Jesus says, I will show you what you can't see, what you can't hear, what you can't touch, and what cannot be imagined by the mind. And that's, if you get that, you'll get the gnosis. Actually, he says, if you get that, you won't taste death. Good marketing. <laughs> what is it you can't hear, touch, or imagine, or see? It's, it, it's awareness. You can't see awareness, you can't touch it, but it's what's doing, or experiencing, or witnessing all of it. The Gnosis is about reorientating yourself away from being a thing only, to being a presence of awareness within which everything exists. And when you do that, you won't test death. Why? Because you'll see that you don't exist in time. Time exists in you. Have a look. Have a look right now. Focus into that sense of I, that being, that presence of awareness. And just let yourself be expanded. Let yourself be an emptiness containing everything. And then you will see that what we call time is this flow of ever-changing experiences, which exists dreamlike within awareness. Now, Tim is in time. He started, he will get old and you know, haggard, and if he lasts that long, and he will die. But what I am and what you are isn't in time. This is why it's the discovery of eternal life. Because you're, you're not in time. Time's in you. Like a dream. It's the discovery of what the Gnostics call your unbornness. You see, you can't possibly die. Because you weren't ever born. The apparent nature is born allows you to experience this fantastic flow of wow, the dream time and then it goes. But what you are isn't in it. And if you can see that, then you can get what is my favorite. It's the really big idea, number five, which is this. All is one. All is one. You know, when you dream at night and you're just unconsciously identified with the dreamer, with, sorry, with the dream story, with the character in the dream, it seems like you're, you know, you know, you're this person and those are the baddies or those are these and you know, it's all like it is now. But if you dream lucidly, you see that's not true. You recognize that whilst you carry on appearing to be a separate little thing in the dream, if you dream lucidly, you can quite clearly see that you're the dreamer, and everything is you. Everything is an expression and contained within the awareness that you are. <laughs>